The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Joe Douglas is awake. And the New York Jets have made not one, not two, but three signings within the last 30 minutes. The latest, Tyrod Taylor is the new backup quarterback. He could wear number two. We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show live for like the 10th hour on the day. Let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. I'm here because I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction of Joe Douglas and what Coach has done the last couple of years. I mean, he's building something special the right way with the right values, you know, the right type of leadership. I'm just here to be the best quarterback I can be to lead and to inspire the guys around me. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Jet fans, we put out the bat signal all day long, but Joe Douglas is a night owl. He is like V-Man. He's working the night shift, and the New York Jets have themselves a new backup quarterback. If you were watching our show moments ago, the headline, breaking down the Jets' disheartening day one of free agency, and then three signings within the last 25, 30 minutes or so. The first signing, John Simpson, two-year deal, probably the new starting left guard, Maybe right guard. We shall see. Then after that, they go out there and sign Javon Kinlaw to a one-year deal. So certainly get your Al Woods type of replacements along the D-line. And then moments ago, the reason why we have a brand new stream, the Jets have signed quarterback Tyrod Taylor to a two-year contract, which was something I harped on that I wanted the Jets to do, right? Overpay, two-year commitment, get Tyrod in. And this, to me, is a no-brainer. We are waiting on the financials of what the money looks like. But this, to me, was obviously a no-brainer by the Jets. Look, once it was clear, Gardner Minshew and Jacoby Brissett were not realistic, right? They both signed with teams. They give them an opportunity to compete for a starting job. You can make a case Tyrod was the next best option. To me, it was either him or Ryan Tannehill. I thought it'd be Tannehill more likely because of his connections to the Jet coaching staff. But to me, it shows that they were willing to pay up to get a guy like Tyrod Taylor. And we'll see what the money is. I'm sure a lot of people will know what it is by the time you watch this video, but we know it's a two-year deal and it was a move the Jets had to make. Tyrod Taylor is a solid NFL quarterback. He's a good backup. Now, he has been hurt in his career. We understand that. But most of the time, it's because it happens when he's playing the Jets. He doesn't have to play the Jets. In fact, no Jet lineman is allowed to touch him. If they do touch him, that's not allowed. So he'll be wearing the, the red practice jersey when he goes up against the Jets defense. So that's a positive. I covered Tyrod when he was the quarterback of the Texans for one season. Great guy. Locker room will love him. He's obviously going to have no issue being a backup. He understands his role. And let's be real. You can't rely on Aaron Rodgers playing 17 games this season. It'd be nice. It'd be great. But you got to go in expecting that Aaron Rodgers might miss a couple games. You can't be prepared if he misses the entire season. I don't care who your backup is. Your Super Bowl dream is over if that happens. But if Aaron Rodgers sprains an ankle, hurts his hamstring, and has to miss, let's say, three or four games. Tyrod Taylor is good enough to go three and one, two and two. And that could be the difference in making the playoffs or winning the division or who knows. So they needed to improve a backup quarterback. You knew this was coming. When Woody Johnson says, we need a backup, we didn't have one last year on the record. You knew this was coming. They will either cut or trade Zach Wilson, maybe in the coming days, maybe it drags on. But Tyrod Taylor is going to be able to wear number two if he wants to with the Jets soon enough. But good signing, no issue with bringing in Tyrod. He was my preference over Tannehill, and I'm glad the Jets got this done. So I know a lot of people want to weigh in on this. We'll continue to stream and be live. I think we're in like hour 10 or 11 of being live today. So Jet fans, you guys are the greatest. Please hit the like button. 
and subscribe to the channel. Sign up for the Patreon if you want bonus content and Discord access when we're going to be live. And help me break down the signing. We're going to bring on a good friend to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, our film expert for JetsXFactor.com, Andrew Fialco, joins us now. Andrew, we got a backup yeah. quarterback, baby. Zach Wilson will not be that dude, and Tyrod Taylor will be Aaron Rodgers' main backup. Yeah, and it's a huge, a huge signing. I, I, like you said, we can't, we can't count on Rodgers being healthy all 17 games, and when they're going to change it to 18 games, we're not going to count on that either. So we're not just going to punt those games away, and I'm sorry – so the Wilson truth is that we won't have to talk to anymore. We can't punt those games away and just give Zach the ball. Now we have a guy that has a lot of experience starting in the NFL. I've always been a fan of Tyrod Taylor. Um, I've been a fan of him since – well, there was one year where we were thinking about signing him to like come be our like uh, our starter for, for a year or two. I've always been a fan of him. Like you said, locker rooms love him. There's only good things I've heard said about him. Uh, so this is a great signing by, by Douglas. Once it was obvious you couldn't get Brissett because New England gives him a chance to compete for a starting job, and you weren't yeah. going to get Minshew, who's, who might already be their starter based on what his contract looked like with the Raiders. I mean, of the guys out there, the only other names that I looked at and said, all right, I, I could live with it, was Tannehill for the obvious connection to the coaching staff. I thought maybe you could make a case for a guy like Taylor Heineke or maybe Jameis Winston, although I didn't love Winston because he turns the ball over a lot. I want someone that could just manage the offense. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Tyrod Taylor is the best of what they could have gotten. Like he's he's a solid NFL quarterback. He certainly can manage an offense, and he was by far and away the best quarterback that appeared for the Giants last season. Yeah, why they changed? Why they? Oh, they they went to Devito when when Tyrod got hurt, right? Correct. Yeah, when he got yeah. hurt against the Jets. Right. Exactly. So it was never like a oh he was the third string. It really wasn't that. That was never the case. And I, the De, Devito move was like a, a flash in the pan, and then they kept him as starter. But yeah, Tyrod's Tyrod's really good. We just needed a veteran QB too. Like this still doesn't mean we're not going to go draft a, another quarterback, which I think we will do like later on in in the draft. But like we said, we needed to reshape the entire QB room. It was never going to be Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson as our viable backups ever again. And the fact that me and you had to come on here and show film of those two to Jet fans, I, I apologize on on <laughs> the Jets' behalf for that. But it won't be next year and. It's a great move. It's it's probably my favorite of the three so far. Yep, no doubt. I mean, Tyrod is solid, folks. Look, it, it, he he's not going to come in and he, he's not going to be Aaron Rodgers, right, if, God forbid, Rodgers gets hurt. But you're not cooked. Uh, and I'll, I'll, here's all I need to tell you about Tyrod Taylor. If he was the Jet quarterback this year instead of the combination of Wilson, Boyle, Simeon, this playoffs. Jets team very easily could have been 10-7 and seven in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Totally agree. All right, a lot of people, I'm sure, want in on this. we got a bunch of people on hold, so we'll get to your calls. We'll try and rapid-fire as many as we can. I just want to shout out the audience. There's 738 people watching this live right now. It's just after midnight on the East Coast. I know there's plenty of other great Jet YouTube channels out there, so thank you for spending time with us. We've done, like, four different streams today, and we finally got positive Jet news to react to here. Joe Douglas is a night owl, folks. He's awake, baby. All right, him and V-Man on the night shift. So we'll see if there's maybe even more signings between now and when we sign off the air tonight on this stream. But, of course, the big story, Tyrod Taylor is a Jet, as is John Simpson, the guard from the Ravens, on a two-year $18 million deal. And same with Javon Kinlaw, one-year deal. We're waiting on the money uh, for yeah. Kinlaw and Taylor officially, so I'll keep checking Twitter. I did want to play one clip, though, before we get to some phone calls here. So uh, this was brought to our attention by, I forget the listener in the comment section in the previous stream. So Chris Long, who's highly respected, at breaking down football, two-time Super Bowl champion. On his podcast, he actually did a breakdown on the Jets' new likely left guard. This was Chris Long from earlier this season on his podcast talking about John Simpson, who the Jets signed earlier tonight. There's somebody I want to shout out on the Baltimore offensive line. John Simpson is a guy that keeps popping up for me when I watch tape, who I caught on a hot mic after one of the touchdowns saying, I fucked that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Edwards, driving, driving for the touchdown you called it and you were dead right go to mitchell's touchdown and watch what he did this guy adds a physical element to that offensive line that fits who they want to be perfectly and i just want to shout him out in the run game i really like this guy not a lot of people talk about him but he's got that attitude the first play of that cleveland game they ran counter or something like that and he flat backs at area smith and it set the whole the tone for the whole game and so I really like John Simpson. They challenge him Saturday night in that meeting room. They yep. say, hey, play one, big dog. 
we're going your way. Play one. We're going to Big Zadarius, and they turn, and the whole team's in that room. Exactly, dude. Yeah. They do that. The whole team's in the room. He's in that point in his career. You can make yourself the guy you want to be, and that's awesome. I mean, how do you not how do you not like that from Chris Long and his brother Kyle Long there, Andrew? That is yeah. that, that's that nastiest nastiness in the run game this team needs. And you know what my biggest knock on the Jets O line was besides the fact they they were they were just bad and injured? They're soft. This guy's not soft. So after watching that, I'm in. I like the signing even more than I already did. I think the best point to make is we were we were soft. Like very, very soft. I can't pull up a clip of Lakin pancaking a single person from last year. So just seeing that is a breath of fresh air. And, yeah, we want guys that are passionate. We want guys that want to be here. And we talked about it before. I think the best thing about him, and I haven't watched any of his tape yet, is that he played 19 out of 19 games last year. We need guys that are going to stay healthy. Continuity on the O-line is most, most important. Like, you need to build that chemistry. And, look, Tidman, Simpson, AVT, God willing, Tyron Smith, and then the 10th pick, it could be a lot worse. Like, for all the Jeff fans who were very worried today, things could be worse. And obviously, we didn't get Tyron Smith yet, but the O line's not looking as bad as we as we potentially thought it could be. Yeah, obviously they need to make more moves, but this was this was an underrated one, and I'm glad we got that that cut there. Shout out to the listener who told us that what Chris Long said about it. It was a good clip to play. All right, let's get to some calls now. Gus Buster Hotline. Let's go to Ricky and Y who starts us off on our stream this evening or early morning, I guess technically. What's up, Ricky? Hey, what's happening, Jake? Uh, th this is awesome. Th these are the hours that I'm normally awake, so this works out well for me. Um, you know what? I'm really, really happy to hear the uh, Tyrod Taylor news. Like, you know, that answers one big question right off the bat for us. Um, man, I, I, I'm really hoping they're like deep in discussions with Tyron Smith or something. I really hope that gets done. Uh, we, st we still got some stuff to, to do. Um, you know, I, I heard that Jets were among the teams that called about Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. And you know what? Uh, if, if we could somehow end up with like a Keenan Allen for like a mid-round pick, I would be so happy. And, and it would restore some faith in Joe Douglas uh, for me. And uh, I'm just looking forward to what moves we do next. Uh, hopefully tomorrow is an even bigger, busier day for us. And uh, before I go, oh, I want to throw out one potential free agent, and I want to hear what uh, Andrew has to say. Uh, I like Derek Naughty from the Chiefs. Uh, you know, good run stuffer, uh, frees up Chris Jones to make plays all the time, and, and underrated as a pass rusher. I mean, he's only been in the uh, the league a handful of years, but he got three Super Bowl wins already, uh, you know, and – just the way he frees Chris Jones up, he could do the same thing for Quinnen. I think that would be a good cheap signing for us. Let's see, see what you think about that. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a cheap signing, definitely. He's, he's an unrestricted free agent. I think right now, after we made a move for Armstead, I don't think right away we're going to go after any more D tackles. I think Douglas knows that like, with the money we have before we start restructuring and putting things into signing bonuses, we're going to probably address O-line again and then Hopefully, God willing, a receiver with a with a trade or in free agency. But yeah, Derek Nottie's good. Look, D tackle like you just need a, a solid guy that, like you said, can uh, free up space for Quinnen and hopefully win some one on ones, take on double teams well. I don't know Derek Nottie that well, but it seems like he would be a, a pretty cheap co contract. He's young, played for the Chiefs. They always had a good D line, so I would not be opposed to it. Hey Andrew, give me a money sign, right? Give me one of these. Money, 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 money. <laughs> Chef Kevin Gilbert says just gifted 20 memberships. <laughs> oh my god, we got to get like a Charles emoji now. I mean, we got to I mean, there's there's a lot we're considering for the emojis out there. But wow, after we had the big fella gift 50 in the previous stream, 20 were just gifted here. An incredible incredible gesture uh by the great the legendary Chef Kevin Gilbert. So the following people just received channel memberships courtesy of our guy, Chef Kevin. Let me pull up the list here. My uh, YouTube is a little slow. Here we go. 20 names. Um, let's see. Uh, it's not coming up for me. Who got a membership? I can't see. It's not coming up on my end. Do you have the names on your end? It was like the suspense is killing me. I want to give everyone a shout out here. Let me refresh my browser. Yeah. Uh, you, want me to, you want me to rip them? 
Yeah, you, go ahead. You rip your first set of names. We got Lasso. We got Matthew Serena. We got Trail Trek Family. We got FPP. Antonio Ambrosio. We got Chris Peterson. Tony Stark. Big Rush 2112. Brandon Ace. Party with Peg and Artie. Jose Colon Jr. King of Kings 92. Gary Weber. A Rod's Left Achilles. Alex W. Victory Monday. Aria Shaikin. Elvis Rivera. Donovan E. Jack Brooks. That rounds it out. Cheers, cheers, Chef Kevin. I, I don't like into the names, but good job there, Andrew. Yeah, got you. See what happens when Joe Douglas is awake. We drink Hennessy, we get memberships, <laughs> and Tyrod Taylor is the Jets' backup quarterback. Thank God. All right, let's catch yeah. up on some super chats. Doug says, I bet JD told Tyrod he could keep number two. Probably. Maybe yeah. that was the selling point. Hey, we'll let you keep number two. What about Zach Wilson? Don't worry about it. Hennessy <laughs> says, Dark Knight Joe Douglas is alive. Who's next? I don't, are we are we going all night tonight, Jet fans? I mean, uh, does Douglas have another one uh, in him before we go to bed tonight? God bless the Central Time Zone, by the way. I'm going to miss this. Dano says the best one-two punch we've had since Vinny and Chad. Um, yeah, probably right. I'm trying to think. Like, I guess Fitz and Gino maybe, but Gino got punched. Gino wasn't the Gino that he is now when he was with the Jets. No. Um. What about what about Mark Sanchez and Mark Burnell, who I saw at the bar at, at the combine two weeks ago? Yeah. Well, who is uh who is Fitzy's backup in 2015? Well, it eventually was Gino. Oh. Ah. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is definitely the best one two punch we've had. Yep. Uh NYJ Maddie writes in just when we thought we're out, they pull us back in. Midnight stream. Let's go, Jake. We're alive, folks. All yeah. right. Don't don't call him Sleepy Joe Douglas. He's just a night owl, all right? He's like V-Man, all right? He works the graveyard shift. That's when he does his best work. Paolo writes in, I saw Tyrod play at the Jets-Giants game last year. Yes, he did get injured, but he clearly showed he can make dynamic choices at QB. I was at that game, too, with Beningo in the rain. Uh, it was ridiculous. And Kenny from Staten Island. Um, look, Tyrod, half of Tyrod's injuries have happened against the Jets. So, that in theory, that can't happen anymore because the Jets aren't allowed to hit him. So, that's a positive. And... Look, the, the bottom line is, would it be nice to still have maybe a decent number three? Yes, but if you're on your number three quarterback anyway, you're probably screwed. So at this yeah. point, Tyrod Taylor is the best of what was uh, what, what was available to you. Minshew and Brissett went off the board because they got a chance to play somewhere. And Tyrod Taylor, it, you could do a lot worse than Tyrod Taylor. I'm a huge fan of the signing. Yeah, as am I. Uh, I'm just happy that we didn't wait and then sign someone – like you said, the market's weird. I'm very intrigued to see what this deal is because the the money that was given out today to like like Minshew, I kind of understood not wanting to give a, a backup two for twenty five. That that's outrageous. And like you said, these guys want to go somewhere that they're they're going to con contend to be the number one guy. I think Tyrod knows at this point in his career, he's an elite number two. Like he's one of the best number twos you could have. So like you said, I think he's going to have um, a good mindset going into it and understand that he's the backup. Also, there's something to be said for Tyrod's career where he does seemingly always get an opportunity to play at some point. So obviously yeah. I'm not wishing injury on Aaron Rodgers. Maybe Tyrod's like, these things typically work out where I, I get in at some point. And you know what? When he's in, at least you could take full advantage. Yep, totally. Now I see the comment from Allen, who I'm sure hates every move the Jets have made tonight. Brissett only got $8 million. Uh, He only got $8 million. It's not relevant, though. If the Jets, the Jets could have offered 10 he wasn't taking it. New England gives him a chance to start. Yeah. That's the difference, right? And Minshew was a non-starter because they gave him 15 million guaranteed over two years, 23 million, whatever it was. So out of the available options, to me, it was either Tyrod, Tannehill, maybe Heineke, maybe Cooper Rush. Like it starts to dwindle real quick. I'll take Tyrod Taylor, who has taken the team to the playoffs before. He looked pretty good last year when he did play for the Giants. He's a solid backup. Great guy. I can't I, I could tell you from covering him during his one year with the Texans, he is beloved by everyone. So he's the kind of guy you want to add to your locker room. And honestly, he could actually help whoever they end up drafting on day three as the third string guy. So I like that too. I just texted you. I know you're. I know the the fans love that chart. You pull up. Is there any way you can pull that chart up? Oh, let, let me see. Um, so this is just from this past year. Yeah. Well, so let me see. I have. I have. Let's see where he is on the the chart yeah. from 2021 to 2023. But the one you sent me is just this past year. So I'll get that up too to kind of see where he was at this year. But let's see. Can we find Tyrod on this? Where's he at? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna um qualify. He's he's yeah. probably not. 
I don't, has he played a minimum of 300 plays from 21 to 23? He played uh, t- 244 last year. So I guess he didn't play that many in the, t- the other two years. Uh, it's pot. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll get the one you just sent me. Um, Cause okay. I just emailed it to myself. We'll, so we'll get that uploaded. And while we wait, we'll take a call here. We'll go to Gary. What's up, Gary. All right. First, this could be worse. It's not Hal or Tannehill. So it could be worse. And before anyone says he throws too many interceptions. Okay. Jameis Winston threw for 5,109 yards his last year as a full-time starter. No Jet in the history of the franchise has ever done that. He also threw 33 touchdowns. No Jet in the history of the franchise has ever done that. So he would be a record-breaking Jet if they had him. Uh, To compare him to Tyrod Taylor, they played almost the exact amount of games, same amount of games. Winston's played 93. Taylor's played 92. Winston has thrown for 10,000 more yards and over twice as many touchdowns. So having those facts, I need to understand how Tyrod Taylor is better than Jameis Winston. He is. I mean, I just, I think he's a better back. I just gave the facts. So let's look at the facts and explain to me how he's better. Given the facts. I mean, it's just, I just, I just think he's a better player. I just would rather have him as my backup. I think he's more of a leader. I think he's a better, I think he's better at, uh, it kind of the role they need him to be, come in and not turn it over, be a game manager, hand the ball up to Brees Hall, let the defense – like, I, Jameis Winston I think might be like – might have more of a higher upside, but like I kind of – I want the steady consistency that I know what I have in Tyrod Taylor. That's why. If if if, if Rodgers gets hurt, with there's a better than 50-50 chance he's going to get hurt at this age. Do you want a guy that can win you games, or are you hoping just not to lose them? Because we could have just kept Simeon if you just want to not lose games. Uh, there's, it's a, that is a ridiculous comparison there, Gary. That yeah. is absurd. No. You know what I want in my backup quarterback? Someone that can win you games. Are we going to act like Tyrod can't win you games? Look, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have hated Winston. I just I, I Ty, Tyrod Taylor is a solid quarterback, all right? Yeah. He has been solid throughout his career. He doesn't turn it over. Jameis Winston does. All right. I that's what I need in my backup. I need a guy with a high floor. The Jets can win games because of their defense, their special teams, and their running game. If their quarterback doesn't, it can make, you know, the, the basic throws. And here's the chart that Andrew was referencing. Look where Tyrod is on this chart. So this is quarterback efficiency from just yeah. this past year. And Tyrod now, Taylor, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, because I saw people like people always hate on the chart, but they need to understand what the chart's saying. That, that's the bottom line. The chart is saying on the left side. EPA per play. So that's expected points added per play. You could look up like the the fine line of what the definition of that means, but it's basically how efficient the offense is ran when the quarterback is playing. And then completion percentage over expected. That's basically this website, which is an awesome website. It's rbsdm.com. They're going through every single ball it's thrown and like seeing how likely that ball would be completed. So I don't know if you guys remember from last year, but I do. Like Tyrod had a ton of balls that were like just completed because of how good his deep accuracy was. That's one thing Tyrod's awesome at. His deep accuracy is unreal. And Top right is Tyrod Taylor, by the way, folks. Right. He was over 4% in completion percentage over expected, which is better than elite guys like CJ Stroud, elite guys like Mahomes. And like, obviously it's not a stat that I'm like, I'm not saying he's better than them because obviously he's not, but it's, it's a meaningful stat and it's a meaningful chart to show how efficient quarterbacks are. It's not just a, a random stat stats chart that like that that's what fans need to know uh i I mean i I just i can't believe what gary's dying on the james winston hill i I mean i like i would take him like winston's not terrible but look where tyrod is on this chart he's good man and a great point about the deep ball accuracy too andrew because like when in doubt just throw it up to Karen wilson and tyrod at least gives you a chance to do that which excites me yep totally and he I saw a tweet. I just saw a tweet. I don't know if it was Michael Nani or someone said, like, it's concerning. Oh, Connor Hughes tweeted, like, it's a concerning. He extends plays but holds on to the ball for too long. I don't know. We don't need to start, like, over-evaluating Tyrod as a quarterback. We kind of know what he is. And that's kind of why I like him over Jameis because he's a game manager that can also extend plays. He's not just a sitting duck in the pocket. He has good mobility. Like I already said, he has a good deep arm. We don't even need to go into his film. We've watched him for years now. He's a quality – pretty accurate quarterback when, when protected 
Jameis is a little bit too much rinky dinky for me. He had the 30 for 30 season, 30 picks, 30 touchdowns. We know what Jameis is. He's kind of like a Minshew, like, like every play you hold your breath, something crazy could happen, good or crazy bad. That's not really who we want behind Rodgers. We want someone, like you said, that could come in and hold the fort down and hopefully go two and one or one and one in, in a two game stretch. Winston this year, he didn't start a game. He appeared in seven games, though. Uh, he's 25 of 47, two touchdowns. Three. I mean, like Tyrod, Tyrod's better, man. He's better. He's a better fit for yeah. what they need. He know he also he can handle playing in New York. He's been in this market the last two years. I'm sure it was appealing that I have to move his family again at this stage yeah. of his career. Uh, I mean, I, I, what are we doing? Here? We spent too much time debating Tyrod. It's a good. It's a good signing, man. Like you yeah. can get on the Jets for a lot of things. Signing Tyrod Taylor is not one of them. That's a good move. Now, please get rid of Zach Wilson. I was gonna wear my uh. Tyrod Taylor number two jersey tonight, Andrew, but I realized I no longer own a Jet number two jersey, so I can't even put it on. Well, Tyrod has a chance to do something really mean but funny and like tweet, like add Zach Wilson, like how much for the number. But he probably, <laughs> we know Tyrod's not going to do that. But yeah, no, no Tyr- Zach's as good as gone. We, we knew that. But uh, yeah, I mean, Jet fans just have to be happy about the QB room going forward. Like Tim Boyle's gone, Zach Wilson's gone. That's a great, great thing that I just said. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah, look, look in all seriousness, I wish Zach well, but obviously with Tyron yes. here, I mean, goodbye to Zach. He's either cut or traded. Ideally, he's traded. That way they could get some cap relief, assuming they you know, could get 18 to take on the contract. If not, even if they have to eat some of it, it's better than nothing. So we'll see. Famous yeah. Jay, relax. TNT in the house. Take a puff. More to come. This guy, Famous Jay, has been sending like, Super chats all day, telling everyone to relax and basically do bong hits. So I, I respect <laughs> it, Famous Jay, all right? You got a couple good signings. Hennessy writes in, how does Gary like Winston and not Caleb? It is kind of funny, right? Gary is like the quarterback whisperer. He has like the hottest of takes on quarterbacks. And he's dying on like the Joe Milton and like well, he, James he Winston Hill. He doesn't like Caleb Williams. He thinks Caleb Williams, he has a third round grade on him, I believe, to quote him. I gotta go find. I gotta go see his film breakdown. And see what he's talking. See what he's talking about. Him. Yeah. Get a get a second opinion. I like. I, I love Gary, man. He, Gary called <laughs> my uh, Mad Dog Sports Radio show uh, yesterday, which I I think that was yesterday. I, the, I I've been live so long. This is the most amount of on air work I've ever done in the day. At yeah. least we got something tonight, man. I, I'm taking a swing of Hennessy to that. Some more moves. Oh. The, uh, oh yeah. Well, what is it? Yeah, I'll read this one. Here from the meme says, Tyrod was starting for the Chargers before a doctor punctured his lung, and then we got Justin Herbert's rookie year. Yeah, I mean, like, like if we say Tyrod's injury prone, and yes, obviously, like, he's had injuries. The, the lung puncture thing, like, that, that's just shit luck. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, that's not yeah. his fault that a doctor accidentally punctured his lung. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, and also, you know, the, 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 the injury he had against the Jets was the 2018 season when then Baker Mayfield came in. That was the Todd Bowles special. Oh, we didn't prepare for, you know, Baker Mayfield. Uh, never forget yeah. that game. And then obviously this past year he got hurt against the Jets as well. And then in came, you know, the Tommy DeVito in the rain. So, I mean, yeah, he, he's dealt with some injuries. But ideally, one, he doesn't play all that much this year. And two, so be it. Like, he's the best of what you could get. And you got to roll the dice. When he did play for the Giants this year, he was pretty effective. Completely agree. Uh, let's keep rolling. Uh, Luppy is up next. Hello, Luppy. Hey, how you doing, Jake? Again, listen. I was sitting there and I was worried. And I'm watching all the stuff that's going on, and uh, big freaking check for JD. We needed a backup quarterback, and I think Tyrod is a great fit because he's been in New York, and New York is something. Don't don't let it fool you. New York is something to be able to play there. And he also has been playing with no offensive line with the Jets as well. So he's, I mean, with the Giants. So he's used to running around for his life and doing good things. So I think it's a great fit for us and a big freaking check for JD. And I am back on board because he seems like he has a plan. I just, I just think <laughs> Luffy, that, I love you, man. An hour ago, he's got no plan. Yeah, We're I was, not not right. anyone. Because, and now it's like, yeah, I'm he on does, board. He's, he's got a plan. Thing. He does the little thing. I'm like, is he awake? And now he's the freaking dark night. You know, he uh, needed to make that check. He needed that big check. You know, we need a wide receiver. We need a backup quarterback. And he finally hit one of those things. And he's got to do the rest. He's going to get that offensive line going. We need to fucking do this. <laughs> I love we it, need Luffy. to do it. I, I, hey, they're not done. I, I, all right, like 
If, if they're done, I'm not happy. I'm happy there's moves. Let's get. Can we get Tyron Smith signed? Can we get Kevin Zeitler maybe signed? You know, yeah. There's other guys still out there that are available. I think O line still needs to be a need. And honestly, we haven't seen. Here's the here's the storyline to watch tomorrow slash later today if you're already on the East Coast. The run on receivers. When does it start? Ridley's got to sign with someone. Maybe it's the Jets. I don't know. But the run on receivers has to start. And when that happens, are the Jets in on a veteran? Or are they waiting for a trade? That's There's two questions with the Jets now that backup is solidified. Backup quarterback. They have three main needs. It was backup quarterback, offensive line, receiver. The run on receivers didn't happen today. You can't criticize the Jets for receiver. No one side receivers. Gabe Davis, no one wanted them anyway. Now, like... When does the run on receivers start? It's probably going to start tomorrow or slash later today. What do the Jets do? That's what I'm looking for, for on day two. Yeah, Connor Hughes had a good tweet uh, about 20 minutes ago. He said, Tyron Smith and Calvin Ridley not signing on the opening day of the legal tampering period surprised me. Thought the market for both would be robust enough to get something done. This could bring the Jets both back in back in on both. Then he keeps saying the same thing. Like It's, it's getting frustrating at this point, Jake, hearing like, Joe Douglas, he just doesn't budge. Like he he sets a price, and like like he said, like it has to be Joe's number. Like okay, but maybe you overpay for a guy like Tyron Smith because Joe, I know you woke up, but you got this is your year, brother. Like this is it. So giving an extra couple million to a guy like Tyron Smith to be Rogers' blindside for the year next year or two is worthwhile for your job and for the longevity of the team and longevity of Rogers. It's a I'm done hearing that. Really, it, it's pissing me off. To like, it's his number, and if it's not his number, then he's not signing it because that's not how it should be. We could, we could put three million dollars of a, of someone's contract into a signing bonus and make a little money, like teams do it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point. Like, you have your number. This is where, in do or die, you're six, you're five of a full off season. Adjust your number and get Tyron Smith. And if you are uncomfortable with an extra million or two. Just do it. Your quarterback's Aaron Rodgers. He's 40 years old, coming off major injury. Do it, and then you're not as desperate at, at number 10 now. Come draft right. night, and maybe you're not in a spot where a team can leapfrog you for the tackle you want. You, you know, like you're actually in a like you're you're covered. You have ABT. You have Tyron Smith. You're covered at tackle, and then ideally you could get a tackle at 10, and ABT could go back to guard where he's an All Pro. Like that. That is how you you handle this. If if I am Joe Douglas, now that I'm awake. I am going to like send every you up text imaginable and booty call the crap out of Tyron Smith's agent and get a deal done. Like, I, like I'm with you, man. Like that's the guy. All right, that's the only elite tackle that's a true difference maker. Are there injury risks? Yes, but I'll take 13 games of Tyron Smith when he's ever missed a playoff game, and that to me is worth the overpay when I have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Yeah, it's a no-brainer, really. So I, I hope they do it. If not him, I'm trying to see what other guard, what other tackle out. Jonah Williams is obviously still there. We don't love him, but. He's better than what yeah. they've had. Um, Trent Brown's available, and um, that that's that's as far as I know. Donovan like, Smith, George Fant, like if you want like a lower I, tier I, tackle. Fant had a good yeah. year with the Texans, but there's always that injury concern with them. Right, Donovan Smith, like notoriously known for being really um, high in penalties and pressure rate. So I wouldn't be a fan of him, but I, I think I think Tyron Smith's like. I don't know. Give him what do we get? I don't know if he wants a one year or two year, but I'd two, give him what two he wants. Year, two years, twenty six million. Give him the Dwayne Brown contract. Yeah, I mean it's which is even crazy to say because like Tyron Smith is a top five tackle in the NFL still. Like like last year he was he was unbelievable. Anyone wants to go back to our film breakdown we did on him? Um, he still ranks highly like top five in pressures given up, sacks given up. He run his run blocking is great. So, yeah. We'll take it. Uh, Matthew says Bakhtiari will be our left tackle. Like, no. Like, you could, I'm, I'm okay with signing him. One year, $4 million. You know, I think it was Buffalo Jeff Andrews. Like, 750 k per game he appears in as incentives. Yeah. Fine. He's not he, – he cannot be the, the answer at tackle. Like, I don't care how much Aaron loves him. And I think Aaron's not dumb enough to bank on him either. So – like you could bring him in, but he can't be that. That can't be the tackle addition and be like, we're good. No, that would be horrific if we did that. Like, I don't even know if Bakhtiari still wants to play. I, I don't know. Rogers, I think Rogers will know better than to let Douglas think that that should be the one move, and it can't be. It, it won't be. Douglas, Douglas won't do that. I, I, I can't see that happening. 
Tyrone Garcia. Shout out to him. He just became our latest Patreon member. Get in the Discord, Tyrone. It has been popping all day. Appreciate your support. Shout out to everyone. Uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, we had an unbelievable uh, generous gesture by Chef Kevin. Gifted 20 Jake Asman channel memberships earlier. So shout out to you again, Chef Kevin. And wow, look who's watching the show live right now. The great Connie Carberg is back. She says, great point about Tyrod being able to handle New York, New Jersey area and media. That's so important. Let's give a shout out to Connie Carberg once yeah. again. First ever female scout in NFL history. Sent a great tweet as well. She's locked in, staying up late with all of us, uh, following the Jets news here. Um, you know, look, I, here's the thing, too, with Tyrod. If Rodgers does get hurt, all the pressure is going to be on the guy. That is the backup, and I think Zach had issues just dealing with that spotlight, that scrutiny of playing in New York. Tyrod, it doesn't affect him, man, and he's been in this market now a couple of years. You saw what happened with Daniel Jones and Tommy DeVito. He's very even keel. If Tyrod Taylor had to start for a month this year, which could happen if Rodgers gets hurt again, you feel comfortable that like the moment won't be too big for him, which I think – I don't know the answer. Like Jameis Winston's played in Tampa and New Orleans in his career. I, I think Tyrod being in this market, I think that's valuable that he's been here the last years. I think that matters. I don't even know – if. Why are we just assuming that Jameis also wanted to come here? Like, I know he, he restructured his contract with the Saints, but this, the contract they gave him before was a huge contract. I, I think he. we have to understand there's guys that want to start still. Tyrod is aware of the situation and willing to be the backup. That That's something that's, that, that's another green flag for me. I don't really know what Jameis wants, but again, like, Jeff fans, why are we picking a fight about our backup quarterback when our backup quarterback the last few years has been unplayable and then we – Saw Tim Boyle play. We've seen Simeon play. Like Tyrod Taylor's on another stratosphere than those two. So we should be happy with it. Dano says, get in the Discord to argue with Gary directly. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Big fella, 921 people in here. Hit the like button. Shout out to you, big fella. Shout out to everyone that is tuned in right now. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We are going to continue with your calls right now. Gus Buster Hotline. Promo code Jake, 15% off on your umbrellas. Get yourself an umbrella before April showers. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because joining us right now is a man who, dare I say, might be happy, but probably not. Warning, warning, Alan alert. Shit's about to get ugly, folks. Warning, Alan alert. Hide the children. And I know he's not happy about our Islanders who are down 2 nothing in the third period right now. What's up, Alan? Uh, evening, guys. First of all, Andrew, I really enjoy the uh, film reviews for all year. I really do. Um, yeah, a couple it. of comments. Mixed bag tonight. Um, I have no problem with the Tyrod Taylor signing. I heard it was two for 11. So five and a half million dollars per is okay for a backup. I have no problem with that. The Simpson signing is the one that just boggles my mind. For 10 hours, we were looking for a guard and we get a guy whose play was completely elevated playing next to Ronnie Stanley. Sounds pretty familiar to a guy that we got rid of in Lake and Tomlinson, whose play was elevated playing next to Trent Williams, okay? What bothers me the most is you look what happened with the Giants. The Giants signed two uh, offensive linemen for $17 million a year in Elamunior and Runyon, and both those guys are better than the guy that we signed. So that frustrates me the most. As far as Tyron Smith is concerned, he's not coming here. The Jets are not going to pay him that money. Just, How, do just, How do you know? How do you know? He is not paying him that money. There is no chance Joe Douglas is paying him $13 million a year guaranteed. Why, no he, just, he, way. Just paid, he just paid that to Dwayne Brown. There is no way he's paying him that money. Our tackle, our left tackle this year will either be Bakhtiari or Olu Fashanu. Those will be the left tackles this year. They are not, Tyron Smith is not coming here. And an interesting name that was talked about today is, uh, and it looks like Kansas City's looking to sign Darnell Mutiny. He's a guy that I would definitely would have an interest in, and I think he'd be a guy that would be a great three for us. So I think that would be a good signing for Kansas City. But again, Tyron Smith is not coming here. He's just not. They're not paying him that money. They're just not going to. I, I hope they do. It would nothing would make me happier now. Than the Jets signing Tyron <laughs> Smith. In fact, I like I I would I would probably I, I would do disgusting things for the Jets to now sign Ty, <laughs> Tyron Smith. Forget just protecting Rodgers. Just oh, I'd love to replay that Allen clip over and over again. What does Allen think yeah. he's Belichick? By the way, with the hoodie on indoors. What are we doing here, Allen? <laughs> uh, but look, I what, what is he so upset about over the Simpson signing? It's it's a good signing. He the guy is a good football player. Chris Long just told you that in the clip we played. 
They need to get tougher up front. This guy played 19 games this past year. He's good in the run game. He's durable. Go watch Nadia's film review on social media on his Twitter account. Like, Simpson, for a two-year deal worth up to $18 million, so it's probably not even truly $18 million, is a good signing. They have gotten better on the O-line. This guy replaces Lakin Tomlinson, who was a stiff. Simpson is a better player than Lakin. So are they done on the O-line? They better not be. But the idea that John Simpson is somehow this bad signing because the Giants signed Jermaine Eleanor and John Runyon Jr. Can we wait to see what the Jets do the rest of the night or tomorrow and the next day before we say, oh, look what the Giants did compared to John Simpson? Come on, Alan. Yeah, and I also – I don't know. We're not – me and you are not Joe Douglas, so I, who knows what's going to happen with Tyron Smith. I, I, I'm never going to say, like, here's a guy we'll never sign. We, we have no idea what's going to happen. And I would I, – I, I Alan know. probably I, thought there was no way the Jets were getting Rodgers a year ago. Right. And, and like, uh, let me know Let me know about that, Alan. Where are we – Where? because you weren't watching my show then. So where, where were you at this time last year? Did you think Rodgers <laughs> was coming here? Or you're like, they're going to end up with Derek Carr, Jimmy G, and settle. Right. You just can't say it's like it, it's not – like it, there's a chance it doesn't happen, right. But to say that we're not going to be like looking into it and in the running for it, I, I think is wrong. Uh, there was a good comment I wanted to read here. Um, oh, it, it's – it's, <laughs> it's hey, Rick, Allen's a ray of sunshine. Uh, <laughs> snowball, hoodie Allen. <laughs> All right, well done. Hey, shout out to Hoodie Allen, Plainview's finest, big time Jet fan, friend of the show. Uh, let's see. There is, there was a comment I wanted to read here. It was Shadow Realm worthy, so I want to make sure we could find it here. Um, I'm gonna. Was it deleted? I can't find it. The comments are flying right now. So I, I know. Wanna... Sean yeah, says, "What? What about Trent Brown? Do you have any thoughts on Trent Brown?" Yeah, I don't. I don't mind Trent Brown at all. I was actually just looking at um, him on PFF. He he he. Read, I, if I, if anyone has PFF Ultimate um, or Premium, whatever it's called, really the way I will look at players before I watch their film is see how many pressures they give up and like their pass blocking efficiency. And he 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 was top twenty five out of like one hundred and thirty tackles. He was around where Tyron Smith was actually with he gave up 17 pressures. Tyron Smith gave up 21. Meanwhile, he did play half the snaps. Tyron Smith played a little more than half, but he graded well. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of the grading system, but it, it sometimes looks good. Trent Brown gave up one penalty, two sacks. It wouldn't be bad. I don't know what he would want. But then again, I'm I'm really bought in on Tyron Smith and what he would bring. And I think Trent Brown would kind of be a longer contract when right now what we really need is this two-year window and like a two-year deal for Tyron Smith. Yeah, I, I mean, ultimately, they they, they, they had to they have to sign a, a premier offensive lineman, I think, in this wave of free agency. Like, if not yeah. Smith, can you get another start? Like, I guess Zeitler might, is probably the best guard left. Maybe I'm missing yeah. someone. I feel like you got to come away with one of those guys. And then, like, if you sell me on you're going to use the 10th pick on your tackle, fine. And you have AVT, obviously, for your other tackle. I can live with that. But I, I do feel like they, they need to come away with a notable big-time O-lineman in free agency. They don't need five All-Pros, but it would be nice to get, like, a big-time offensive lineman, you know, tomorrow, next day, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, – I just can't imagine Douglas going into the season being comfortable with our tackle room consisting of Bakhtiari, Carter Warren – we don't know where AVT is going to be playing, but uh, like Max Mitchell, it's not. And then the tenth pick, I don't, I don't think that's good enough. I, I don't think he should think that's good enough. Money, 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 money. Ladies and gentlemen, the king is back. King Loski is here for all of us. You want to know why King Loski is? King Loski is probably the happiest Jet fan on the planet because Tyrod Taylor signing means the official end. I'm Zach Wilson. Uh, so, t so King Loski has gifted 10 memberships. E-Rock, Jesse P, C. Lamb, Mit uh, Mitoic RX, Brian Edwards, Hold the Onions, Carl Johnson, uh, Ron G, Y Salas Jets for Life have all received channel memberships courtesy of our King. Everyone smash the King Loski emoji and pay respects to our fearless Leader. Unreal. 
That's awesome. He's been giving them out a ton, right? Dude, he has been making it rain, the <laughs> likes of which we have never seen on the channel before. It's awesome. It's been crazy. Uh, Dan says, I drained my phone battery twice today watch watching Jake and refreshing Twitter. I put like yeah. a dent in my seat here for sitting in the same <laughs> seat for 11 hours. I was sadly uh, in the same boat. I, I watched a, a bunch of you, but I was refreshing Twitter. Probably I was on Twitter probably for seven, eight hours today. And uh, it's that's why at least now we have something. But like I was refreshing, waiting for anything to come out, Jets-wise, anything. Exile the child. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's no one happier than Tyron Taylor's and Jeff <laughs> Uh Tyrone just became a Patreon member again. Tyrone, did you sign up twice? I got two notifications for two different emails. <laughs> Tyrone Garcia. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate the support on Patreon. Dana says, can't wait to see my screen usage for today on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's been a day for everyone. Um, Craig writes in, Jake, my 14-year-old, is asking whatever happened to FM. Uh, he's no longer with us. Craig, your 14, or Craig's 14-year-old, he is banned for life. Oh, Craig, Craig the Australian. Yes. So I wonder what time free agency opened for him. Maybe, well, like middle of the night, it must have been. So 12 p.m. Eastern is what time in Australia, Craig? Is it, is it, like, it's got to be like the afternoon there right now, right? I got, I let's see. I, he always tells me what the time difference is, but I forget. It looks like it's 3.45 p.m. All right. So him and him and Joe Douglas were on the same, uh, same time stamps, Tim stamps. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, flight capsule. Is Joe saving money for a big time wide receiver? Do we make a splash tomorrow? I mentioned this earlier. The, the the run on receivers hasn't started yet. So who are they getting? You know, all all the main guys are pretty much there right now. Like Gabe yeah. Davis, I didn't want as a Jet, and he obviously got signed uh, by the Jaguars. So now we wait. Yeah, I, I, I'm like that's the whole thing. These three signings are are good, but we haven't made like the big splash yet, and I think there's a lot of time to. I I don't know. I would love to know what Joe is thinking, but maybe maybe he's waiting to see about what's going to go on with the Chargers because everything that's been said, there's no chance they're keeping both of their guys, and I think both guys are really good fits in Mike and Keenan, and then obviously you still have. Hopefully, maybe Sutton. I doubt. I doubt we really go after T. Higgins. That, that's that's one I know he requested a trade, which I was actually really surprised about. But I, I I doubt it. I'm reading this tweet from NYJ Matt, who's probably one of the funniest accounts on Jet Twitter. Zach Rosenblatt falling asleep at 9 p.m. during daylight savings, nonetheless. While Rich Simini's churning out <laughs> articles at 86 years old past midnight, it's the perfect day one free agent storyline. Man. <laughs> Rich killed it today on Twitter. He was he was locked in. All right. Yeah. He's Rich is working right now. The 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 athletic is sound asleep like Douglas was earlier. Apparently, I I've been live the whole night, so I haven't been following like which beat reporters actually on top of their bleep. I'm sure my guy Antoine is up. I love Antoine Staley from the Daily News. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah, I saw I saw Connor Hughes tweeted like at Zach Rosenblatt like tough time to fall asleep something something like that. That's funny. Come on, you can't fall asleep on day one of free agency. Yeah, yeah. Not if, not if you're covering the Jets, I don't think. No, uh, come on now. Open phone lines for anyone who wants in on the conversation. Once again, our Gus Buster hotline, Steve Asman, is watching the show. You could help my dad and hey. his company by getting a Gus Buster. Um, Kay writes in, Zach's still a Jet for how long? A 49er or a Ram? I will tell you this. Zach Wilson's not going to the Rams. I, like, I don't think people realize how toxic, toxic it was between him and Mike LaFleur. It's not happening. Yeah. Now, maybe the Niners, I guess. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know why they would even need him. I think people are just saying that because Darnold's, Darnold's there. Like, I don't think there's any – there's no, like, substantial reasoning or, or thoughts behind that. I think it's going to be a random team. and I I don't even I don't know. There's no market for him. Like Mac Jones already got traded. That that trade was also just like throwing him away. There's no market really for Zach. It's just kind of how it is. Yeah, and Mac Jones going for a six tells you all you need to know about that market because 
Like that means the absolute ceiling for Zach is a sixth. And you're right. not getting it. So we're talking about like a 2047 seventh round pick. Yeah. I mean, they sent, I think it was Mac Jones in a seventh for a sixth. Like they, it wasn't even just straight up. Yeah. I mean, there's just the value is not there. No. Um, can we trade him to the UFL? I wish that'd give you more, <laughs> more teams. Uh, like we don't enough of the Zach Wilson. We got to stop with that. Yeah. I can't even do it anymore. Adam writes in, would you rather trade next year's two and this year's four for Higgins or four and a six this year for Sutton? I'd rather do a four and a six for Sutton. I would as well. We got to think about the contracts too. Sutton's on like a two for 30 something. And T is going to want to get like re-signed to, unless would he, I guess he would be playing on the tag. Is that, is that how it would work? Uh, you'd have to give him a new contract. I, I think if you require right. him. Because he wants a new right. deal. I don't know how our I don't I don't think financially that would make sense for us. Sudden sudden makes a ton of sense financially, fit wise, the whole the whole nine. Yep. hundred percent. All right, more comments here. We'll maybe wrap up in just a little bit here. Gone for almost an hour again. Uh this is a good comment here from Alan. Have no idea where Justin Fields is going. Look, I, that's all you kind of need to know too, by the way, about Zach Wilson. Yeah. But like the Bears can't even trade Justin Fields, who say like I don't think Fields is a great quarterback, but he has been infinitely better than Zach Wilson has for three years, and they can't get anything for him, which is why he's still in Chicago. Yeah, that that's that's been a real interesting one for me. I, I thought Fields would have a, a a market better, definitely better than Zach, because he at least put. To end the year, he put a good product, I thought, on the field and like some sort of a, a product that you, you would think you could win with. Right now, it's kind of like what offensive mind out there is looking at Zach and what he did. Granted, I know I know I can't believe we're still talking about him, but the way he wasn't in a good environment with the Jets are the O line sucked. We had a couple weapons for him, but there's a reason why Fields, like you said, isn't going when he played well to end the year. Like people people still think that the Bears should keep him and not take Caleb. But, yeah, that, that tells you all you need to know. 100%. Um, let's see. Make sure we didn't miss any comments here. Once again, if you're just tuning in, Joe Douglas is a night owl. Three signings, and they all happen in about a 30-minute span. John Simpson, two-year deal worth up to $18 million. Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle from the Niners, brought in one-year deal. Don't have the money yet on him. And I, I haven't seen the money. Have you seen anything on Tyrod's deal with the financials? Are someone said it earlier, but it didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that anywhere else. Yeah, someone said two for eleven. I, I, I haven't seen any, any of that. That was I his don't... deal with the Giants previously. I don't think that, like, I, I think the Jets probably had to pay more than that. Oh, nine seconds ago, just came out. It's what is it? Two years up to eighteen million. Ah, uh, classic. <laughs> So agent spin, you I get. I don't mind that. I, I don't. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's fine. That, what? That's that's nine million a year, AV. Yeah. But that's if he hits every incentive. Which I mean, one of them is probably wins the Super Bowl. You know, right? Or plays a certain amount of snaps, which we hope he doesn't play any. Um, ideally, so yeah, I don't mind that. It'll, those you sometimes he, he'll probably just it'll be like a two for ten with like you said, like up to eight million in incentives. Um, I want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Where did you see the two for uh, eighteen? Tom Pelissero just just tweeted it. Yep. All right. So Tom Tom is he's got that one. He's got yeah. he's got Tyrod's agent. Uh, yeah, worth up to eighteen. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, so you get their their plan B and Taylor. All right. Yeah, I mean, it it sounds like the Jets went hard after him. So good. I mean, don't mess around. Like that. Look, I, this is what I want them to do. Don't mess around. Get the yeah. best backup, and let's go. All right? Uh, hopefully uh, hopefully, the only time we see Tyrod Taylor play this year is in the preseason and when he's taking a knee at the end of games or the Jets are up by so much, Rodgers is out of the game. Exactly. That, that, that's the bottom line. Snowball says, we just traded Zach for a Huga House hat. Dude, my Huga <laughs> House hat is worth more than Zach Wilson at this point. <laughs> All right? Promo code ASMAN, A-S-M-A-N, 15% off. And you could rock the hat that you see Aaron Rodgers always wearing. And also, plenty of other people on the Jets. And comedian Shane Gillis rocking Hugo House, too. So check that out. Promo code Asman. All right. More calls right now. Mr. How do I pronounce his name? Mr. Muscarnera. 
Did I say that right, Mr. Muscarnera? No, no, it's Muscanary, but ah, you did bad. good. You did good. My bad. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm all right with the Tyrod Taylor thing. Uh, I wanted Jacoby, of course, but um, I I really hope we don't get b- bacteria or whatever the, her- the dude name is. Bakhtiari, yep. Yeah, I really hope we don't get him because our turf is horrible for one and just he's – Five injur- five surgeries on his knees. That's not going to work well with the turf we have. But Tyron Smith and uh, hopefully Zach Wilson will be traded tomorrow for something. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. I mean, you might you might you might have to wait. But I mean, what the yeah. signing does tell you is Zach Wilson will be dealt or cut at some point. We knew that yes. already. Hopefully, we got the no- uh, new number two. That's all. Uh, that's all I hope for. Hey, Amen. <laughs> nice beard, by the way. Appreciate it, man. Cheers. Love it. Cheers. Hey, we got we got a backup, baby. So hey, cheers. Hey, hey, hey. Love it. Thank God. Uh, good call, my man. All right, we got some business to attend to here because FM has returned, or is it Jets Forever? This is this line. This comment lends me to believe it's Jets Forever because Jets Forever is the Zach Truther. <laughs> Y'all really can't keep Zach's name out of your mouth. It's embarrassing. Jets Forever. You are banned for life. You can keep making fake accounts. And coming back under the name Kareem Carson, it doesn't change the fact that you're done. Into the shadow realm you go. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Y'all got on your knees and prayed on Mims' downfall. Clap it up, weirdos. Oh, my God. Also, I, I knew it. Allen finding a way to – he calls it earlier. This is classic Allen. He calls in earlier <laughs> saying, I got no issue with Tyrod Taylor. Then sees it's two for up to $18 million, and now it's too much money. Allen, zip it, dude. Stop. If they did nothing at backup, you'd complain about that. They go out there and actually overpay for a backup, which – did they really overpay? Like, that's the going rate. All right? Like, $9 million for Tyrod Taylor makes sense. Jacoby was the highest paid backup in football last year. He made $8 million. Like – like, what What did you want the Jets to do? They have Aaron Rodgers, who's 40 years old, who missed the entire season last year. They needed to spend on a backup, and it cost them probably a one-year deal that they could get out of, two years total, and you're going to be upset about this? Give me a break. I, I don't – if you hate the signing because you think it's too much money, come back to us, dude. I can't. I'm not doing this tonight. It's also not the deal, probably. We have to see guarantees, and it, it's probably more of a one-year deal – with a lot of incentive to play. So it's not, probably not two for 18. Yeah, it's worth up to 18, which tells you yeah. it's probably nowhere near 18. God. <laughs> uh, just oh, I love it. Before, I have no issue with the Sonic. Now, oh, my God, too much money. What, what should they have done? Nothing? Bring back Zach Wilson? Like, yeah. Hawks, who's a Zach Wilson truth, they're 9 million for Tyrod is insanity. You know what's insanity? Actually thinking that Zach Wilson could play football at a high level. <laughs> Look at it, Hawk. Look at it in stupid town. All right. If you turn this chart upside down, Zach Wilson's the best quarterback of all time. All right. Tell yourself that. All right. Whatever makes you happy. Enough. God. We're gonna now we're now gonna complain about Tyrod Taylor making nine million this year. Give me a break. Yeah, and Jason, Jason over over the cap, who was a good guy on Twitter for um, the the deals, he just said each of his last three contracts have averaged five point five million a year. So I'd bet it's safe to say the base value on this is eleven million with six in extent in incentives, which is it's the going right. rate for backups. It, that's it's it's not it's not bad at all. Do people realize that the Jets had Tyrod last year? They go to the playoffs. Enough said. Yeah, it's the truth. Craig writes in, there aren't enough rounds in the draft to trade Zach for. He's maybe worth a 26-round pick. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, look, I, I was hopeful they could get something for him, but they might they, yeah. might, they, they, they might have to, you know, attach a draft pick to get rid of him just to try and clear the money. That, 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 I, I would assume that that's going to be the case. Uh, this is funny. Tiller Wheels fall off says Javon Kinlaw just texted me that he's going to rip Deion Dawkins' head off. <laughs> well, if that text happened, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. 
he's a guy that's a similar character to like to to Clemens. He's he's a, he's feisty, so I can't wait. We'll be seeing them go at it for sure. Great, great comment from Top Cat. Thirty-five million for Zach is terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, how about paying Zach Wilson thirty-five million guaranteed the last three years? That's what he's guaranteed, no matter where he goes. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, yeah. crazy. Uh, I can't. I can't. Gary's writing about Jameis Winston again in the comments. No, thank you. <laughs> King Lowski chimes in. Alan's acting like it's his money you got to spend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you care, Alan? It's not your money. You relax. All right? Woody Johnson, Woody Johnson got plenty of money. He started asking season ticket holders to pay his ass in, in November. Yeah. Uh, All right, Jake, I think I'm going to hop off. You're good, man. I appreciate you for hanging out for like an hour and a half tonight. Yeah, of course. I hope I hope the Jeff fans watching, we got we did good tonight. Today's not the worst day ever anymore, and hopefully there's more more good stuff to come tomorrow. Yes. Uh, scheduled for tomorrow? Who knows, man? We'll be live in the morning, early afternoon, and we'll see where the day takes us. Yep. But yeah, I'll be I'll be back on. We'll be back on breaking some stuff down soon. Andrew, thanks for the time, man. Great job. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jake. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Fialco, JetsXFactor.com. Film review on Andrew hanging out with us tonight. Uh, if anyone else is up, any of you content creators, feel free. I'll stay on for a little while longer. Why not at this point? Um, Rick, I think Gary might be James Winston. <laughs> uh, Lasso, any other defensive signings to look out for? Well, I would like to see an Aston Davis resign. That's not probably the answer you wanted, Lasso. But I, I yeah, I do think the Jets could add a another defensive lineman, maybe a safety. You know, they they let Huff walk, so they're going to add a pass rusher, probably on a one year deal. So we'll see. We'll see how they approach it. Um, <laughs> Luppy says, "Jake, you don't want me live again." Luppy, it sounds like you've had a lot of cocktails tonight as well. Drippy Douglas says. Zach Truthers will talk about him for the remainder of the Jets' future. I, I mean, I hope not. I, get over yourself, Truthers. I think the next time we really hear from the Truthers is Zach Wilson will complete a pass in practice that the social media for whatever team he's on will put out, and people will be like, see? And then the next time we hear from the Truthers will be after Zach has this great drive in the preseason. That, that, that I could see. It would be interesting if the Jets actually face Zach Wilson in the preseason. That'd be hilarious. Um, my dad has chimed in on Allen. Allen always has buyer's remorse, which is why he returned the Jets gear he showed us. It's now returned. Yeah, my dad is. My dad brings it up to me all the time that he's not convinced Allen actually owned Jets merchandise. He's like, he definitely bought that just to prove that he's a Jet fan, and then he returned it. My dad is convinced. He might be right. I don't know. But I'll say this about Allen. He might be negative, but he's not a bad guy. He gifted like 20 memberships to people yesterday, which was hilarious. And ironically enough, I gifted him a membership, which was all random. Cartman says, Jake, I'm 15 shots in on whiskey. Call in, man. Why not? Anything goes. LX says, Jake, you think they make a run at Justin Simmons? I don't think they'd spend that kind of money on a safety. I'm not necessarily against it. I would just be surprised. Gamer guy is a Packers fan. Would you guys have taken Xavier McKinney if Green Bay didn't take him? I don't think so. I don't think the Jets were going to spend that kind of money on safety. Um. Uh, Lasso says, "Is Jake finished the bottle of T. Smith is signed tomorrow?" Yes. We don't got we don't got a ton left. Uh, 
Let's go back to the calls right now because Luppy has called in for the eighth time today. Hello, Luppy. <laughs> yes, you keep count, Jake. I can't <laughs> keep count. <laughs> it's late, and yeah, I'm a couple in, so <laughs> it's all good. I love Listen, it. I, yeah, Jake, I love you. I love coming in. I love calling. The calls are great. Everybody is great. And I just want to say we are going to fucking kick ass this year. Let's go fucking Jets. That's right. That's right, Jake. Put your hand in there. Ah, no, we're going to fucking kick <laughs> ass here. Aaron Rodgers is back. I am fucking psyched, Jake. All right, Luffy. All right, all right. <laughs> Good God. Family show, for the most part. I mean, at this point, when it's after 1 Eastern, if there's any kids watching at this point, I mean, that's just bad parenting. All right. Steve says, Miami got decimated today. Yeah, they did. They did. There's the Jets windows right now, right? Because eventually they might not be able to keep all their players. Miami's had to, Miami losing Christian Wilkins is a great example. By the way, underrated takeaway from today, the Quinnen Williams contract is aging like fine wine when you see what Wilkins got, when you see what Chris Jones got. So, thank God they paid him a year ago. JJ says, do you have any good insight on the new offensive guard, Simpson? Uh, go back to the last show after it was announced they signed him. I called my friend Bobby, who covers the Ravens. And he's the number one Ravens YouTuber. He used to work for their flagship radio station, WBAL. He gave a great breakdown on him. And then we played you the clip of Chris Long. Pumping up Simpson. So, you know what? I'll play that again because I have to imagine a lot of people are just tuning in live right now. So I thought, I think this is worth actually playing twice because a lot of people don't know a ton about the guy that the Jets signed, John Simpson. And there's reason to believe. Oh, hold on. Breaking news. Not Jet related, but kind of Jet related. Do we have a Sam Darnold to the Vikings signing? Is that what I'm seeing here? Sammy D. Sam Darnold, one year deal worth ten million, joins former teammate Josh McCown, who is Minnesota's new QB coach. Cousins out, Darnold in. Man, I hope Sam succeeds. I really do. Good luck to Sam. I still think Minnesota will draft a quarterback. But man. Sam Darnold to the Vikings. They're not adding Zach Wilson, by the way. You can forget that. Let's go, Sam. Good luck to him. See, like, the the, the Jets failed Sam Darnold. Now, I don't think Sam ended up, obviously, being a good quarterback. Maybe he's gotten better. Maybe sitting behind Purdy and learning from Shanahan for a year helped him. But, like, anyone who, like, loves Sam and blindly, I get it. I do. Because Sam showed you a lot more than what Zach Wilson showed you. And the Jets' answer to help Sam Darnold was, let's get him Adam Gase. So, like, you feel bad for Sam because, like, he literally had no talent around him. He, he ended up not being very good, but he had no talent. You can't even make the same argument with Zach Wilson, who's had Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, top five defense the last two years, an elite special teams unit. Like, honestly, if you put Darnold on this past year's Jets team, they're probably nine or ten wins. You can make a case. So, shout out to Darnold. Good for him. It will be good to see him and McCown on the sideline together. We're going to get a reenactment of that viral, you know, hair-touching thing they did as Jets. Boomtown breaking. Justin Jefferson has demanded a trade. Ha! Huh. I think he just wants to get paid. I think that's his first thing. Good luck to Sam, though. I'm happy for Sam Darnold. Um, here for the memes. Another backup quarterback sign, not named Winston. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jameis Winston. I, he's. I don't think anyone's giving him a starting chance again. Oh, Jets do play the Vikings next season. Good point, Scott. That game could be in London, by the way. That's a London game possibility. Minnesota's going to the London. I'm in.
Um, oh, poor Hawk is trying to defend his boy, Zach. Salah makes Gase look like Andy Reid. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you can hate on Salah all you want. What did Adam Gase do well? Seriously. Because I can tell you what Salah does well. He, he, he held the team together, and they've had an elite defense the last two years. He's hired a good defensive staff. Players play for him. What did Adam Gase do well as the Jet head coach, Hawk? You tell me. You tell me. What, 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 what did the quarterback guru, Adam Gase, do well? Where did the Jets' offense rank under Adam Gase's two years? 32nd? Yeah. Both years? Yep. You, you tell me. All right. Your defensive Zach Wilson is like, it's, it's like scary, man. All the pieces come together in a season. It can be absolute perfection, folks, because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Jets, led by Zach Wilson, will fucking suck ass, guys. Like, what are we doing? All right. Anyway, good for Sam Darnold. We'll stay up for a couple more minutes. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if there's any other. Um, we'll see if there's any other signings here. Any other YouTubers up right now? Everyone tweet your favorite Jet YouTuber. Tell them to come on the show. Boy Green's got to be up. Everyone tweet at Boy Green twenty five. Tell him that he tell him he has permission now to make sweet love to his fiance. Because the Jets have made some moves. Um. Let's see. JJ says, we forget how bad Gase was. I didn't. I don't. All right. I mean, come on now. I didn't forget how bad Adam Gase is. Maybe people should remind Colin Cowherd about Adam Gase as well. Just an idea. And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. Donnie, Gase greater than Hackett. Yeah, honestly, look, I, I'll say this. If I if I needed someone to get me points on an opening drive, that you know, I found the one thing Gase did well. There you go. Good job by Donnie. The what the one thing Adam Gase did well was the opening scripts were good. They just always got points on their opening drive. And then after that, teams adjusted, bleep hit the fan, and they did nothing. That was it. Our star writes in, Jake acts like he doesn't have the same hat slash headset set up as Gase. Do you think anyone who wears radio headsets is an NFL head coach? <laughs> what do you think this is, man? Arizona Jet says, Tyrod getting nine mil a year. I didn't realize he'd get that, but good for him. I think Dable coaching him up for him for that contract. I well, I don't think people realize something here, right? The highest paid backup in football a year ago was Jacoby Brissett. He made eight million dollars. We saw sixty six quarterbacks play in the NFL this year because of all the injuries to the quarterback position. Sixty six different guys started games. So we can't destroy the Jets for neglecting backup quarterback and then criticize that they paid Tyrod $9 million, $1 million more than the highest paid backup a year ago in Brissett, who now got $8 million this year in his new deal, but he's going to New England for a chance to play, which is why he probably was willing to take maybe a little less, even if the Jets offered him more. So, what, like, what do you want, Jet fans? Did you want a good backup? Then you had to pay a little extra for one. I have no issue with Tyrod making nine million. The cap went up. It makes sense that with the value of the backup would go up. That to me is like the bottom line here. We can't we can't rip the Jets for not having a backup, and then they get the best backup option on the market, and we say, "What are they doing?" Uh, doesn't work that way. And also, as we talked about earlier. Jason from Over the Cap brought this note up. Andrew read this on the show before, Andrew Fialco. Each of Tyrod's last three contracts have averaged 5.5 per year, 5.5 million per year. So I'd bet it's safe to say the base value on this is 11 million with a 6 million in incentives. That's a good deal. Let's, let's wait till we get all the details. 
of the deal. When you hear it's it's worth up to $18 million, that's that's the agent spin. So it looks like it's a bigger number. Tyra Taylor is a, a great signing. All right? Joe Douglas is awake, bitches. He's working the night shift, and so are we. As we're in hour 12 of our live streaming today. David, Tyrod was the best option. Brissett was off the board, as was Minshew, because they're getting a chance to compete for starting jobs. Who's better than Tyrod Taylor that you could have had? I'll listen. Like, you could argue, I guess, Tannehill, Winston, uh, Heineke. I, I really didn't love the trade for Sam Howell idea, but that was out there. I guess. I, I mean, this is what we're talking about here. Folks, I've been live for 12 hours today, and I got to be honest. I didn't think that we would have a comment as stupid as the one I'm about to read to all of you. So cover your uh, your ears if you're near children. All right. I don't want to you know say anything that is going to uh, be offensive or be taken out of context or cause any you know disruption. But if you're near any children, cover their ears. CC writes in. We should trade Sauce for a first rounder and take J.J. McCarthy. I'd rather be the Jake Hasman heel than the Robert Sala truther any day of the week. But it's weird because I don't see myself as a heel. I think I'm a realist. I don't want to have any of that shit. You do. We don't want no damn New England to win shit. I mean, I'm not even going to address that. I mean, that comment is so offensive to all of us. We all have just lost IQ IQ points, like or our intelligence, and we've lost brain cells. By the way, if the Jets were to actually trade Sauce, which they won't, nor should they, and he should be a Jet for life, Sauce Gardner is going for at least two first-round picks and then some. At least one first-round pick so we could take J.J. McCarthy. Are you nuts? Oh, my God. Honestly. I mean, I'm hitting the stupid town sounder twice because that is so absurd. What did I do? Now, what did I do? Crazy. I mean, that can't be a real comment. There's no way. We got to end the show with something better than that. I mean, come on now. Come on. Craig says, I'm telling my son that FM is back. And maybe that was FM. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's too funny. Uh, <laughs> Cactus Johnny, that merits a lifetime ban. Oh, it's brutal. Um, what else we got here? Connie says, so right, opening drive with Sam Darnold and Gay scored in over half their games once this past year with Zach and Sala. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the only good thing I could say about Adam Gase is he was excellent in the opening drive, the opening game script. And then the Jets would, you know, the Jets, it's like, oh, well, it's just a week they turn it around. They score like an opening drive touchdown. You know, Darnold looks good. And then it's like, well, they don't score the rest of the game. It's ridiculous. That's that's the one thing I could say, Gase. Honestly, Hackett Hackett should have uh, allowed Adam Gase to call the Jets opening drive this year. My dad says Allen is the goat of heels. <laughs> he is. He really is. John with a super chat. I fear we trade DJ Reed. What grade for today? I don't think they're trading DJ Reed. What grade for today? I, I'll say the Jets get a. A B minus for today. It w- it was a lot lower, and then they salvaged it with bringing in Tyrod and the two other signings. You can't crush them because it's not like there uh, there were all the receivers that went today and they did nothing. A bunch of the tackles got signed, or uh, excuse me, a couple of the tackles got signed, but not none of the big ones. Right, Tyron Smith's still there, Trent Brown, Jonah Williams are all still there.
bunch of the guards got signed, but now we're gonna see we're gonna see we're gonna see where the Jets end up in that market. Also, the the they're trading DJ Reed. Like, I, I where does this come from? Why would they trade him? Who's playing corner if they trade him? I mean, come on now. By the way, the fact that we have 776 people watching this right now, 1.20 a.m. Eastern, just shows you how great Jet fans are, as if we didn't already know. We've gotten 30 new members in this stream. Just unreal. Hawk says, show the other chart where Zach isn't at the bottom again. Oh, sorry, wrong button, Hawk. Hey, but if you flip this upside down, Zach's actually in first place. Here's the chart you're talking about. Quarterback efficiency from just this past year. So, yes, congrats to Zach Wilson, who is better than Bailey Zappi. He has done it. Congrats. Unreal. Hawk, this shot's to you, man. Cheers to Zach Wilson's improvement. Unreal. Joe Rod, Boy Green may call in. Actually, do I stay on for Boy Green? Uh, let's see. Have we missed any signings here? Darnold, the last big one. The last thing I want, though, is this to show to end, and there's another one. So uh, we'll, we'll go a couple more minutes so we don't miss something. He's hitting the sack, he said. Uh, you, what are you talking about? You got me excited that we were going to have a little boy green. Um... Let's see. Adam says, feels like the Kinlaw signing is going over people's heads. It's a, it, it is a good signing. They needed, they needed defensive line depth. He fits. Um, someone wrote they should extend Reed. Kate and I agree with you. Yes, they should. And honestly, if today taught them anything, you know what they should do? They should extend Michael Carter. So don't lose him for nothing. All right. That'd be nice. Jordan says, by tomorrow at 1 p.m., it would make my day to have Higgins, Sutton, and or Ridley on this roster. That'd be nice. I'd rather a tackle. Uh, Fernando, Jake, Greg, the leg, best signing. It's a very good signing. It needed to get done. I, I don't think we could say it's the best signing. Pasquale, or Pasquale, hopefully one of the two shots that it was correct. He's up next on the show. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what's up, Jake? First time caller. I've been watching you for a long time. But uh, I've noticed Higgins is requesting a trade. And I know the Bengals probably wouldn't trade them, but let's say they're willing. Would you trade maybe pick swap our first with maybe like a third or fourth for next year for Higgins and then maybe a fourth or fifth next year? No, I would not. That's way too much. You think so? Well, I mean, what's Higgins worth? I'm pretty sure he's got a pretty high price tag. I would, I'd be willing to use next year's two in the deal, but a pick swap from 10 to 18, that's, I mean, I don't have the trade chart in front of me, but that's, that's way too much to give up for a guy that you then have to give a contract to. True. I mean, do you think they'd ask for a first for Higgins or? Yeah, but the Jets wouldn't give him 10 and I wouldn't trade next year's one. So I think it's a yeah. tough deal. It is. All right. Let's, I just wanted your opinion on that. Now, Pasquale, are you, uh, are you going full Dion Dawkins on me here doing a shirtless podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Good call. Uh, that was a that was an interesting one. A Rod's left Achilles has chimed in. 
Jake, what do you think about Moe's salsa slash chip bar? Um, it's fine. Moe's has better queso than Chipotle. Chipotle's got better guac. I think Moe's has got better chips in general, too. So I, I'm a fan. Scott Foster, morning coffee. Thank you, Scott. I'm a five-hour energy guy, though. Edward says, we still have McGovern to play backup. He's a free agent. You got to bring him back. I think they will, but we'll see. Um, Dan says, can't go wrong with a wrong Doug from Moe's. I don't remember which one that is, Dan. I haven't had Moe's. There's no Moe's in Texas or in Houston, so I haven't had it in a while. And when I have had it in New York, I usually just go with the stack. Jay says, of course the calls are weird. It's freaking 2 a.m. Yeah. I might have something to do with it. Um, Addison, Sam and Zach are going to be Vikings together. I think just Sam is. I don't think the Vikings are going to add Zach Wilson. Mr. Downtown says, Jets versus Vikings, Sam Darnold revenge game. Yeah, put that game in London, baby. Imagine all the Jet fans traveling out to London to watch the Jets and it's Sam Darnold playing for the Vikings. Oh, man. I'm in on that. I'd rather play the Vikings in London than the Jaguars. The Jaguars always play in London, so they have an advantage because they've done it so many times. If the Jets are going to get a London game, you'd rather play the team that doesn't always play in London. Um. All right, we gotta we gotta wrap up the show shortly here. Alan says Sam already had a revenge game, beat us in Carolina. Yeah, it, I mean it's not really a revenge game if he were to play the Jets, but it's like ah, oh, you're playing your old quarterback. I mean, if you think about it, like how how many Jets are even on the team that played with Darnold at this point? Not many. Like what, Quinnen and C.J. Mosley? Is that it? Like, Darnold never played for Salah. I mean, maybe he'd want to, like, revenge against Douglas for trading him, but I don't know. Douglas didn't draft him, so it is what it is. Adam asked what grade I'd get the signings. I just said it a little while ago. I probably would say B- is fair. It was a lot lower before... The Tyrod signing. You can't kill the Jets for not getting a receiver today because nobody got receivers today. The run hasn't started. Some of the O-linemen went off the board, but the big one, the big tackles are still there, and they, they got one guard. Simpson's an underrated signing, and they'll probably add another one. So they're not done yet. So we'll see. Uh, Ronnie, Jets, Jags in London this season. Yeah, probably. That, 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 that was one of the things I heard at the combine. Jets, Jags in London. It's not confirmed yet, though. So, we'll see. All right, wrapping up here shortly. Last chance. Just for fun, all teens went to sleep. Uh, maybe. But Joe Douglas is doing some of his best work right now. He's awake. See, this was Joe Douglas earlier. But this is Joe Douglas now. Um, oh, I was going to play the uh, the clip again of Chris Long talking about the Jets' new likely starting left guard, John Simpson. Enjoy this for those just tuning in. There's somebody I want to shout out on the Baltimore offensive line. John Simpson is a guy that keeps popping up for me when I watch tape, who I caught on a hot mic after one of the touchdowns saying, I fucked that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. There he is, Edwards, driving, driving. 
in for the touchdown. You called it, and you were dead right. Go to Mitchell's touchdown and watch what he did. This guy adds a physical element to that offensive line that fits who they want to be perfectly. And I just want to shout him out in the run game. I really like this guy. Not a lot of people talk about him, but he's got that attitude. The first play of that Cleveland game, they were in counter or something like that, and he flat backs at Arius Smith, and it set the, whole, the tone for the whole game. And so I really like John Simpson. They challenge him Saturday night in that meeting room. They yep. say, hey, play one, big dog. We're going your way. Play one. We're going at Big Zadarius, and they turn. The whole team's in that room. Exactly, dude. Yeah. They do that. The whole team's in the room. He's in that point in his career. You can make yourself the guy you want to be, and that's all. That's ex exactly what this team needs, man. Toughness. Tenacity. You know, you heard Bobby Trostad say in the, one of the earlier shows, the Ravens kind of revitalized his career. I mean, he's still young, too, right? He, he's only 26 years old. So I'm a fan. Hawk says the clip's from three years ago. Hawk, get lost. The clip is from like four months ago. Stop, stop bullshitting the audience here because of your love affair with Zach Wilson. Goodbye. See you later. We're ending the show with Hawk in the, in, you know, in the shadow realm because I can't take it in. Into the shadow realm you go. Aaron Rodgers being voted the most inspirational Jet by his teammates is legit one of the saddest things I've ever heard. Hawks like spreading misinformation. That's from his rookie year. He played with the Raiders his first three years in football. You imbecile. He was on the Raiders this past year he played one year with the Baltimore Ravens he played all 17 games he then played two games in the playoffs he played 19 games this past year the Jets could use that talking about that, that clip is three years old moron absolute imbecile God big rush just made the night folks well not really but the, Jet, the Jets and the great audience made the night. But this is an awesome gesture by Big Rush. Shout out to Big Rush. A $50 super sticker. Big Rush, you're like the only one that sends super stickers, man. I, I appreciate it. If you have a comment or something you want to add to it, write it in, man. That's big time. If I'm going to send Hawk to Stupid Town again, I'm happy to do it. Man. Thank you, Big Rush. Incredibly nice of you, man. Appreciate that. That's that's tomorrow's Uber to the airport tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. I think I think Big Rush just wrote a comment here. Um, where'd it go? I can't find it. Big Rush says, "Send his ass." I did comment, sir. I appreciate you, Big Rush. Very nice of you, man. Very nice of you, yeah. Look, I, I, I'd be happy to send Hawk to the Shadow Realm, honestly. If YouTube would let you adjust the Shadow Realm so it's not five minutes, if, if I could put it on for 24 hours, I would have done it a while ago. God. Uh, What's Hawk's bounty? $1,000. We might lower it because I, I can't take it anymore. It's one thing to defend Zach Wilson, but now we're playing a clip that is very clearly from a couple months ago, right? With Chris Long. Chris Long didn't even have his podcast three years ago. He's in the NFL. Moron. Um, but anyway, I, I can't. Um, there, I feel like I was missing a comment here. Hold on. Super chat here from GBG. I call Tyrod as our guy. Dude's a winner. W move. He's a, he is a quality starting quarterback. You can win games with Tyrod Taylor. When the Giants went to Tyrod this year, before he got hurt in the Jet game, he instantly made their offense function. All right. Tyrod Taylor, people don't want to hear this. He's better than Daniel Jones. I mean, if you watched the Giants last year, that was obvious. 
The way Giants fans like bend over backwards trying to defend Daniel Jones, like Tyra Taylor is just as good. But anyway, it's not really about that. Tyra Taylor, here's how you judge if it's a, if if you have a good backup or not. Here's the Jake Asman rule of backup quarterback play. If your starter's down four games, can you go 500 or better? I think with Tyra, the answer is yes. That's what they needed. All right. That's what they badly needed, and they got it. Joe says, what's your ideal day for tomorrow for us? Offensive line and receivers. Uh, last one says, no other Jet YouTuber putting up content at this hour. I'm not, I, I, to be honest, I haven't checked. So if any of them are no longer live, but they're watching, feel free to call in. We had a Boy Green cameo earlier. I texted uh, Parkinson. I texted Will, but he's like, I'm cutting up film. He's like, I'll come on with you tomorrow. I'm like, all right. Um, but we're going to wrap up here shortly. I just want to make sure we get to everybody. How many people are watching live right now? 606. I mean, seriously, I mean. There's more people watching live right now at 1.30 a.m. than more people than the typical show we get during the week. If you don't think Jet fans are starving, I mean, just, I'm not asking for a Super Bowl. Can I, all I am asking from the Jets is please keep Aaron Rodgers healthy and let him do the rest. All right, because this, this defense is still damn good. They have a damn good special teams. Just give me healthy Aaron Rodgers, and I'll take my chances. That's all I'm asking for. Let's just see it. That's all we need, folks. All right, and you know what will help? Sign a couple offensive linemen tomorrow, Joe. You got one tonight, good signing, good value signing. Go get a stud tackle. Um, let's see. CC is back from uh, the realm after his trade sauce Gardner and draft. You know, I'm not even gonna re I'm not even gonna dignify your your latest comments, CC. I don't I, I don't have time for it. All I'm going to do is simply just send you back to the realm. I'm glad to be an Asmin Shadow Realm. Into the Shadow Realm you go. Aaron Rodgers is a glutton for fame. I don't think he loves his teammates. I think he loves attention. GFY. First word is go, and the last word is yourself. Boom. I'm, I, I I can't. Anyone who suggests Sauce Gardner for one first round pick to take JJ McCarthy yeah, enough. Um, David says I want a Super Bowl for me and my dad. Yeah, I I would love one as well. I I'm just not even asking for that right now. I, I, just give me just give me a chance next year, man. Edward, Super Chat, what safety do you like? I would bring back Ashton Davis. I like that they brought back Chuck Clark. You know, is there another safety they can maybe sign? Sure, I, I wouldn't expect it. Jorge, Super Chat. You guys are amazing, man. We're still getting Super Chats at 1.30 in the morning. Uh, sign up for Patreon, the least thing you can do for Jake. I appreciate it, Jorge. Thanks for being a channel member and a Patreon subscriber. You guys, you guys allow me to go to a Super Bowl, go to the Combine, produce the amount of content we produce. I mean, this is truly a full-time job. By the way, the programming note, I found this out tonight. I will be on ESPN Radio nationally Thursday night from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Now, knowing how things go, the Jets will probably make a bunch of signings in that period. If that happens, I will be live from the ESPN New York studios that night, and we'll just do a, a show when I get off ESPN. So be on the lookout for that. But that's Thursday. We'll worry about tomorrow and go from there. Um, Mr. Downtown says Lowski should get the gift of banishment to Hawk Honestly, if YouTube would let me put on a setting Where you could actually send people to the shadow room For paying money, I would do it in a second Lowski certainly earned it Justin is watching on Twitter Shout out to Justin, good to hear from you Justin Tyrod, good signing, Simpson, good signing Greg DeLay, great signing Yeah. Kinlaw, not a bad signing either once again, I give the Jets a B minus for today. That's not bad. Now go get some offensive linemen tomorrow and you'll get an A. Arizona Jet, Keenan Allen for a third. I don't know if you got to trade a third for him. 
I would trade a fourth and a fifth. If I had to trade a third, I probably would do it, though. Yes. I got to look at Keenan's contract, though. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, John, where's Thomas Morstead? He'll be announced Wednesday. He's back. Technicality in his contract. They can't officially announce it. Lasso, King Lowski's the man. We have so many man of the people type of guys in this fan base. Lasso literally is the Las Vegas citizen of the month for his heroics. And King Lowski has basically gifted the entire live chat memberships the last week. Unreal. Unreal. All right, we're an hour 40 in. I think we're good. So we've done, I think we did. So I want to thank everyone because this was, I've been doing the Jet YouTube thing three years now, right? Right after Salah got hired, I feel like we started doing daily videos. For those who've been with me from that point, thank you. If you've joined along the way, thank you. But I don't think I've ever been on YouTube for 12 hours like we were today across like four different shows. So thank you all for tuning in. It was absolutely incredible. If you want to support me, the best way to do it is become a channel member or become a Patreon member. And obviously, like the video, subscribe, tell your friends, Jets Talk, each and every day. We're going to be back early tomorrow, 9 a.m. The show with Robbie Sabo will get underway. I'm going to set my alarm very early, though. So if the Jets do something incredibly early tomorrow, maybe we're live before them. But the plan is to go live. Actually, I think it's I think it's 10, 10 a.m. Eastern with Sabo. Subject to be live earlier than that, though. So. You're watching live right now. Just know that turn your notifications on. Get in the Discord, if you, and you'll be notified what the content schedule is. Because we got we got a lot a lot going on. Once again, I appreciate everyone who tuned in. Joe Douglas has awoken. The New York Jets have made some moves, and day two of free agency will get underway, and we'll cover all of it here on the channel. All right, super chat at the buzzer. We signed Big Z. He was money all season. Well-deserved. Absolutely, Sam. Absolutely. For a while, that was their only move. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Thanks again, everybody. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And in honor of the Jets finally having a legitimate backup, let's perhaps reminisce on the end of the Zach Wilson era. Hey, Robert, thanks for taking my question. With Zach starting again Sunday, does he have any compromising photos of you or someone else in the organization? No, I, I, that's a fair question, Jake. Um, I'm going to take the fifth on that one. What the hell is this going backwards bullshit? You don't go backwards. You throw the ball out of bounds with your big goddamn arm, and you go back in the fucking huddle. No, I, I, that's a fair question, Neil. Um, this is bullshit. Jose Feliciano, the blind Puerto guitarist, can see that he is terrible. This kid does not want to run with the ball. Are you kidding me? This is the shit I'm talking about. You bitches, this. You did this. What the hell feel? No, I, I, that's a fair question, King. The damn, damn year. We are seeing this in that town. I'm not trying to win the goddamn game. You gotta be kidding me. Sit his ass. Fuck down. I could have made 20 yards with that goddamn hole. If your quarterback can now play in the NFL, they get rid of him. Oh, there's one of his 27 seconds. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I don't give a shit. If you cannot play football, get your ass off the field. And walk around and wipe Rodgers' ass because that's all you're good for. And you're sitting here defending his bullshit. If I see Zach Wilson go on that field, me and Lowski are going up personally. And we're going to take his ass off the field. This is torture, man. God damn it. I'm, I'm All right, thanks, guys.